Hey y'all, so today we're working on stuff. The Seastar steering helm uh, is leaking again. Last time it was at the helm. This time it's at the steering ram back by the engine. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the end caps to stop it from leaking hydraulic fluid. Cause what'll happen is it'll get air in the hydraulic system and it won't steer no more. It's not gonna go anywhere, um, except maybe in a circle. <laughs> so stay tuned to rip out a hydraulic steering ram seal on a Seastar system. All right, let's get to this. All right, yo, so that's it. It's the Seastar steering ram. And what it is, is it's a, like a hydraulic piston. It goes back and it goes back and forth um, with the hydraulic pressure, you know, regulated up in the steering helm. So what's going on is right here, this, this is an end cap. Okay, now what that is, is it's like a seal that goes over the shaft. Um, it's a seal that goes over the shaft and keeps the hydraulic fluid in and it, it's leaking. So we got a new seal, new end cap right here. It comes as a complete set. Um, I usually get OEM on this. I found some aftermarket. I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, you know, new seals. So, and we're going to we're gonna put that on the ram. So there is a tool that goes in these holes to loosen it. It threads up. Okay. And uh, we're going to have to detach this ram to get it to slide off. All right, y'all. So what we got here is we got a 5 8 It's got to come off here. There's a washer, don't lose it. This is the cap that's gotta come off. There's also a cap over here. There's also a cap over here on the other side. This 5 8 has gotta come off. That cap right there has gotta come off. And that's what we're replacing has the seals inside. Now these hydraulic lines right here, okay. Um, they're gonna stay connected. I'm gonna try, we'll see what we do. This is a bleeder valve. And uh, this is the other hydraulic line. This is the other bleeder valve, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is after we put the new caps on, we're gonna have to get the air out of the system, which means I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to put hydraulic fluid in the helm and we're gonna have to cycle the helm left and right multiple times. And then another person, it is a two person job, will have to be back here and uh, they're gonna have to bleed the air out of the line, okay? So let's get to that. And how they'll do that is I'll hold it all the way over to this side, okay? and I'll hold it all the way over this side. And then as I hold the pressure there, they're gonna loosen this nut up and the air and the fluid are gonna pump out of here. And then we're gonna steer it all the way back to the other side. And as I'm holding the pressure all the way right or all the way left, depending on which side we're doing, we're gonna release all the pressure out of that and it'll bleed all the air and residual fluid out. Once we are no air bubbles and just fluid, we're gonna tighten that back up. And then we're gonna tighten this one back up. So again, what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn the steering wheel like all the way left, okay? This will slide all the way over, all right? So while it's all the way over, the person back here loosens this up and lets the air and the old fluid out. The person up front is pouring fluid into the helm and maintaining pressure on the steering wheel to force the fluid out, which is gonna bleed the air out. And then you're gonna tighten this, not super tight, you're just snugging it up, and you're gonna go and turn the wheel the opposite direction. And when they go to the opposite direction, you're gonna do the same thing. The person up front at the helm is gonna hold pressure on the steering wheel and pour fluid in simultaneously, while the person back here um, loosens this nut up. And then the water, they're not the water, well, hopefully no water. If you got water, you got a whole nother problem. But the air in the fluid will come out. And then once you get all the air out, you tighten it up, and then you're gonna repeat the process. You're gonna go all the way back to the other direction. And once you go all the way back to the other direction, the person at the steering wheel is gonna hold pressure on the steering wheel in that direction while letting fu uh, fluid go into the helm. And this person will break this nut again, not break it, but release it, you know, lefty loosey, righty tighty, and let th any more air that has been captured escape. Then you're gonna tighten it, and then you're gonna do the exact same process again. You're gonna go all the way the other direction over here. And while they're holding pressure on the steering wheel and putting fluid into the helm, they're gonna loosen this up and allow it to bleed out the air also, okay? Once you get to the point where you repeat that process and there's no more air on the line, you're good, okay? So you're gonna tighten these down, uh, put the covers back on them if you got them, and you should have a solid system. Now, a way you will know if there's air in the system is there will be play in the engine. You'll be able to push it back and forward, right to left. When there's no more air in the system, there shouldn't be any play in the hydraulic. The engine should be solid. They shouldn't be able to like wiggle it back and forth or anything. Um, it should be a solid um, union. The hydraulic pressure will stop the engine from moving back and forth. But if there's a lot of air in it, it'll wobble around. 
All right, so, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you know, as you use the boat, the helm will self bleed at the top a little bit. And you may have to add fluid later on if you notice there's a little bit of play in the engine. So let's get to this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by pulling off this 5H right here, okay? And then we're gonna remove that cap and we're gonna replace it with the new cap. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side over here. We are gonna remove that 5 8 right there, okay? And we're gonna remove that cap. Hopefully everything will be accessible at that point. Now you may have other problems. Sometimes those caps don't wanna come off. These caps get stuck on there, okay? Sometimes these bolts get stuck on there. Um, sometimes uh, you're not able to get the cap off. What I'm gonna do is release this. And at that point, I'm probably gonna to have to take this off. This is like a three quarter back here. I'll show you. See it right there? Okay, there's, there's one on both sides. There's one over here also. Okay, I already got a wrench on that one. All right, and you're gonna to have to pull it off. So just so you know, this is a half inch, okay? This, I believe it's three quarters. I could be wrong, actually. No, nope, it's a three quarters. So, so this bolt back here is a three quarters. Okay, this one is a five eighths, and this one is a half inch for the bleeder, all right? And uh, just make sure you lose, don't take all the pieces off. See, these are like bushing spacers to make sure, you know, to make this hydraulic ram fit this engine correctly. So it needed spacers to take out the play in the, in the ram. So uh, let's get to this now, all right? All right, if you haven't noticed, <laughs> if you haven't noticed when I'm on the boat, it makes everything wobble. So bear with me. All right, we're gonna release, this is a 960. We're gonna five eights over here. We're gonna release this, I already loosened it up a little bit. Of course course it is so so this is spinning freely okay so I have to get a 5 8 and put it on the wrench on the other side okay so which it should be spinning freely so that's not necessarily a bad thing although the, the seals are that loose I guess so I'm gonna get another 5 8 and hold it on the opposite side so it doesn't uh, spin all right so we got a 5 8 on this one and we got our 5 8 here and we are gonna bust it loose Gotta be patient, take your time. Don't lose your parts. See, I got my nut, don't wanna lose my nut. I got a new pie eye sitting here, that's another project. And uh, make sure you keep the right washers and everything back here together because they're different thicknesses and stuff to make things fit right. So make sure you uh, got it. So that one's off. Um, See if I can get this one off. All right, so we got this one going back here. Okay, make sure you keep the washers with it too. And there's a, you know, a shaft that goes through here too. So make sure if the one on the other side is spinning that uh, you hold it with uh, another three quarters wrench, just like we did on the front rim, okay? And uh, you know, you might even want to take it out and grease it while you got it apart. There is usually a Zerk fitting right here in the front of the engine to grease that. Because you don't want it to lock up in there. All right, so got all that off. We'll see if we can tap it in there. Just uh, moved it over, give myself a little more room to work. Wow. Nothing's ever easy. We got it. Jeez. See all my spacers right here? That thing is just on there. All right, let's see if we can get this cap off. Probably not a bad idea to release pressure. Because you're already gonna break the seal anyway, so might as well make it easier to move the engine around by hand. As soon as I get the um, fluid out, it's gonna flop all around anyway. 
probably should have something here to catch the fluid too. Harder than I thought it was going to be. You know, I'm not uh, the best at uh, taking care of stuff. I I beat my stuff up pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I mean, the special wrench here. It's got the little pins in the end of it. They go into the holes. you got something there to catch that oil it's milky too so i gotta get a bunch of that old oil out so probably after i put it together i'm gonna end up bleeding all the old milky fluid out okay so before i was talking about how i was gonna bleed it you know get the air out of the system uh, we gotta get that milky fluid out of there that's nasty all right so when i'm putting the fresh fluid in either you can take it apart now and uh, let all the fluid come out um, I'm going to bleed it out I'm going to put it back together. Um, some, you know, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do this. Okay. This is like redneck tech here. <laughs> I'm going to put my end caps on and then I'm going to flush the system with all new fluid. Your mechanic would probably take the system off and clean it out and wash it down, blow out the lines. I mean, it, it's as good as you want to make it. There's a lot of ways to go with this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the new cap on and I'm going to bleed all the milky old fluid out and um, until I get good clean fluid. So, you know, I'm gonna put the cap back on, I'm gonna spin it one direction until I get all clean fluid. And I'm gonna put the other one back on, I'm gonna spin it the other direction until I get all clean fluid. And uh, then we will we'll have a nice clean system, all right? So let's uh, get the new cap and let's get the new cap and put it on there. All right, y'all, so we're slid the new one on there. It's on there a lot tighter because the seals are good. So you have to push it up. It's good if you have a little lubrication on it because it's gonna need it. Okay, right there and make sure you put it on there do not cross thread it so be careful it threads up easy it should thread up pretty good i'm not gonna lie it usually goes pretty well be careful go slow don't cross thread it it's got to make a good seal looks like it's going in good to me let's just keep going notice it's actually spinning the shaft because uh the seals are so much tighter it's grabbing the um grabbing the shaft. Take your time and do it right. You know, you don't want to lose your steering. It's like not threading up for me, so I gotta push it in as I'm doing this. Make sure it gets the threads. Okay. Feels like it grabbed. So, yeah, definitely. It's definitely going in now. All right, to the other side. All right, y'all, I'm gonna put this side back together. I just want to put a little grease on this thing right here. Because it was definitely locked up in there pretty good. Put a little grease there. I mean, you, you don't really want to get the grease in there. It's gonna be with hydraulic fluid, but this, definitely want to grease. Um, this thing, I had to beat it off. It was really, uh, look at all the corrosion on it. You know, I had to really uh, beat the crap out of it to get it out of there. So, anyway, <clears throat> that's the way it goes. Oh, I got to put my spacers back on. I took my spacers off. Put my spacers back on. All right. Now we're going to put this on this way. Just like this. I don't think this side likes me either anymore. <clears throat> Do not mess up your threads. Okay. So we got this one here. And that's the five eighths. And then uh, we got the three quarter over here. Make sure you got the right washer. The 
three quarter on. And where is the three quarter? It's here somewhere. All right, y'all. Found my three quarter. And I'm gonna put it on here. And then once I do this, we're gonna go to the other side and do the other side. So. Make sure you always start finger tight. Make sure you don't cross thread them. Gotta make sure it's all finger tight. I got both nuts on there. We're gonna tighten these up. And then we're gonna go and do the exact same thing on the other side. A socket would not hurt my feelings right now. <laughs> all right. Couldn't take it anymore, I went and I found a ratchet. I just wanna get this on there a little quicker. It's taking me forever. Make sure this is all tightened down. We're gonna go back and check every one of these and make sure they're all tightened down when we're done. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go work on the other side. There we go. So that should make my engine move. everywhere right good times all right y'all i brought you over here there's the end cap okay we got to remove the five eighths and the three quarter bolt back here we're gonna have to remove this the last one was stuck on we had to beat it off with a hammer you just never know the level of corrosion you're gonna have on your own engine and then we're gonna remove that cap replace the cap and then we're gonna put new fluid in and bleed the whole system all right, y'all, here's the new cap, okay? We're gonna go down there and we're gonna remove the old one, okay? Remember, we gotta remove that bolt, which is a 5 eighths. We gotta remove the one back here, it's a 3 quarter. And then we gotta use the specialty tool to remove the end cap. And then we're gonna put the new end cap on, okay? So let's get to this. Are five eighths. If you notice, I made a mess. I got a rag below it, making sure I catch any of the um, hydraulic fluid. It's going through my little scupper holes back here. So just make sure you take care. You don't want to pollute the environment. And I'm not. I always make sure I grab it. I'm messy in what I do, though. I'm not trying to look pretty for nobody. I'm trying to get the job done and get back on the water. I'm more interested in fishing than I am you know, looking cute to someone on TV. I wanna make sure I get the job done to where my boat is functional. Because that is what I do. Well, I can actually see that last time I took this apart, I'm actually missing my washer. Um, I'll have to look for one. I don't think I have one. We might have to go without that for now. All right, y'all, we got it all off. Let's see if I can get this thing free. We got a whole hot mess going on back here, if you haven't noticed. I'm gonna... You don't wanna ding this up at all. I'm probably gonna mess it up because I'm stupid. Um, uh, this is, can take a beating. The only other way you can do is heat it and uh, put some kind of a puller on it. Um, but when you heat it, you will melt um, some of these plastic bushings and you don't want to mess up any additional seals. So, I prefer a hammer. I may have to, I may have to beat the crap out of this thing. <laughs> All right, y'all, I got it. I uh, kind of beat the heck out of it, if you see uh, that. Look at the corrosion. I'm gonna grease it before I put it back on, but you know, you don't know the shape of your crap. I mean, I mean, I do, because I beat the hell out of my stuff. <laughs> but. You know, I expect the worst all the time. Anyway, it's off. We're gonna rip this seal out now. 
and uh, replace it. So this came uh, right off of here, you know, this was right there. I did beat the crap out of it with my hammer, got it off right there. Now I'm sure y'all gonna be like, oh, there's a fancy puller or something and you know, leave it in the comments because I don't discourage all the criticism. I encourage constructive criticism because you know what? Somebody else is going to be doing this and they could uh, learn, you know, something good. So please uh, let me know how y'all do it. And, uh, you know, I'm a little rough around the edges, but I get the job done. All right. So now I got to move this cap off. And I got a couple problems. One, this hydraulic line is in my way. Okay, so we're gonna move that for a minute. And then we're gonna see if I can't get in there. All right. And you know, it's a little tight. I don't know if it's corrosion or it's just a different wrench. We are gonna do that. That's interesting. So it's moving. What do I gotta do to make it stop moving? Probably make it go all the way over and then do the exact same thing again here is get these in there. All right. Okay, come on. Oh, it busted loose. Oh, look at that. Who knew? All right. So it did bust loose. This thing is driving me crazy. Not in my favorite position. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's definitely in my way. All right, what is it? It's like 11 16 or three quarter. What is it? Three quarter will do it. Let's get it off of there. Put a little more air in the system that we don't need, right? So it's just in my way. All right, let's get our tool back. Take your time. Definitely don't want to mess up the seals. You know, I may be beating half of it with a hammer, but I don't want to mess up this. Because if this ram, the seals, I bust this up, it isn't going to steer. It's going to leak, and I'm going to have to replace this ram. And they're not cheap. So I want you to notice something here. See how easy I'm unscrewing this that is because these seals are crap and that's why they're leaking look at it I can spin that with my finger but whoop, see how nice that comes off okay some idiot ding this okay that's gonna be a problem for me I'm stupid and I just screwed this up so probably gonna have to try to sand it a little bit or something that's not good maybe I'll run this one around it a couple times that's not good at all that's bad I screwed this up because of the hammer so that's what stupidity gets you. You know, don't make the same mistakes I make. I'm here for you to learn from my mistakes. Anyway, probably gonna put a little piece of sandpaper on there uh, just to kind of take them dings out because you want to have a smooth transition. Anyway, let's uh, I'm gonna clean this up and I'll put my seal on. You know, that's gonna cause a leak, could rip a seal. It's me being stupid, you know, just trying to get shit done, but it's still stupid because it results in uh, other problems. So we gotta get this O-ring all the way down here. There it is. Okay. Just a little uh, packing thing, I guess. <laughs> Doesn't even wanna go over the seals. Where that ding is at. Okay. Mm. See how much tighter that is? I can't even turn that by hand because these seals are good. Mm. Nice and tight. All right, let's put it back together. We're gonna put a little grease on this for sure. Needs it big time. Okay. 
that's going to help that. Make sure there's a little grease on there. We're going to put these back on. We got our big washers back here and the three quarter nut. We got the small five eighths right here. Put a wrench on the opposite side to tighten it down. Same thing with the five eighths, tighten it down. All right, I'm gonna put our, make sure our bleeder valve is clean, no debris on it. Put it back in, because we're gonna need that in a minute. Right, let's pull the cap off of it. We got our Danko pliers here. More, more than just fishing, y'all. More than just fishing. There we go. That's a half inch, and then uh, we're gonna put this back on. It's three quarter. Be very careful not to cross thread this stuff. So important not to cross thread this. You screw this up, it's gonna be a lot more money and a lot more time. But don't be afraid to do it yourself. I mean, you can do this crap. It's fun to do stuff by yourself. There's a sense of accomplishment. And then if you're stuck, something happens, you might know how to patch it up to get yourself home too so knowledge is power especially when you're you know 10 20 miles out in the ocean you don't know how to get home it's best you know how to fix your own stuff at least to have to get you inside the inlet be safe you know okay All right, now we're gonna bleed this. So again, I'm gonna fill it at the helm on the steering wheel and uh, we're gonna bleed the air and stuff out right there. This is the attachment you need. This is what goes in. You put this on the hydraulic fluid and you put this into the helm. There's a little nut up there that this threads into. All right, and then a lot of times what we'll do is we'll put a hole in the bottom of the hydraulic fluid so that the air can escape and relieve the pressure from the bottle as the helm sucks it in. All right, let's get to this, I'll show you. All right, y'all. There is the nut on my helm. Man, it's on there tight. It's got a little O-ring on it too. You might want to replace that. All right, and all we're gonna do, is we're gonna take this hose right here and we are gonna put it in that hole and thread it in. That's how you bleed, or how you bleed a sea star helm. <laughs> this is how you bleed the helm, add fluid to it. It's the same process. All right. So, you want to get it in there pretty good because you don't want it to leak. You're going to get to make a mess, so just be prepared to make a mess. I mean, there's guys that are really clean out there about this. I'm not one of them. <laughs> okay, so I got this bottle filled with hydraulic fluid, and I'm going to put this cap on it right here. Okay. your best not to spill it because you're gonna make a mess all right so you're gonna hold it upside down like this and let the gravity do the work and it's gonna flow down in there just like that and you're gonna go from one side to the other see it's sucking it in okay and then you're gonna go back the other way so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go all the way to one side and the other guy's gonna bleed it in the back okay and you're gonna continually hold pressure over so I'm gonna get an assistant because I need one so I gotta go find somebody to bleed this thing. Let's see who's home. So I found a random person who decided he wants to be oily. Uh huh. Sucker. Yeah, he's a sucker. Anyway, there he is. So he's gonna go back there and bleed it. I got my bottle of uh, hydraulic fluid here. And see how it's sucking the bottle in? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke a hole in it. And that's gonna allow it to vent. And I have this in my mouth, that's why I can't talk. But what I did is it's gonna allow it to vent and let the fluid pass better. So I'm gonna spin the steering wheel in what direction, I'm not sure yet. Tell me, oh, no, the other way. The bleeding, open it up. Maybe it's the other way for that one. It might be the opposite one. Keep going. There it is, go ahead and I'll tighten it as I'm turning it so we can get the air out. That should be solid right there. Cool. 
All right, so the next one is gonna push you off. I gotta go the opposite direction. So what we're doing now is we're going the opposite direction to bleed the air out of the other side. Okay, now loosen it up. It's all the way over. There you go, now I purge it like that. Fluid solid? All right, tighten it up. I know y'all looking at Eric's butt. Stop that. All right, she's tight. Okay. I'm gonna go back and forth a couple times and the helm will self bleed the air out of the line. All the way, see him coming up? Oh, coming up. All the way over the other way. I'll push it all the way over because it helps push the air out. You'll see the air, see it all? There it all comes up the line. Go back the other direction. Push it past, hold it, and then when you release, you'll feel the air come out. Oh, that's solid. So that means the air is almost out of the lines now. It's beautiful. Nice and solid with the engine back there. All the way over, push it past. All right, come back, see if any air comes out. All right, no air, so we are tight. So what I'm gonna do is take a dead center. I'm taking all the pressure off. Now that I have a dead center, there's no tension on the steering wheel, I'm gonna start taking this off. And what's gonna happen, is I'm gonna spill it everywhere. It's gonna be awesome. In fact, what I'm gonna do is try to get a little bit of it out of there. I'm gonna break the seal and let a lot of this fluid come down here through gravity. Okay, and then just gotta take it off. So be careful, hard not to get it everywhere. I'm gonna spin the bottle with it. Now it's important right now not to move the engine because if you move it, you're gonna suck air into the system. And that's what you do not wanna do. Okay, so that's all out. I did a pretty good job, to be honest, not getting it everywhere. And now we're gonna put the cap in without moving the system. Okay, now it's nice and tight. The system is bled. Make sure it's good and tight, and then you can start turning it and checking it. If the response is pretty tight, then you know there's no air in it. So, what you'll notice, you see as I turn it, the engine's turning. There's not a lot of play in the system, which means there's not air in it. So it's nice and tight. And guess what? We're ready to go fishing, buddy. Heck yeah. I'm right Let's on. Let's go. Let's go. See you on the water.